Okay. The way it keeps wow. <coughs> wow, guys. Like that, right here. The way it keeps wow, guys. I like the taste of banana. You want inanimate? I want it inanimate, yeah. Strawberry. Okay. The way it keeps staying. Mitte Himmel. Or is it Mitte Himmel? Mitte Himmel. Yes. Wow. Mitte Himmel. Okay. New Week stay with the Himmel. I like the strawberry. I like the taste of strawberry. Okay? But you you can usually eat one strawberry, right? So you just go ahead and make that throw. Like that. New Week stay with the Himmel. It does not affect the verb. The verb stays the same way. If the noun is singular, no problem. If the noun is plural, no problem. With the verb. Here we have a problem. That's why we have that, that one in brackets. Okay? This word is banana, which would be okay with I like the taste of a banana. Okay. If you have more than one banana, you have the AK here, and you make this pearl also. Okay. I like the taste of fish. Okay, so you have to Number agreement. Singular plural. Singular plural. Okay. So can, um, it only works with these are these verbs here. Those are uh, these ones here. No problem. So you could, it won't affect the verb at all. Do we can stay in? Do we can stay in? They do. Now we can stay in the Skipawa or in the Patagua. Okay, they're all pearls. And the verb stays the same way. No problem with that. <laughs> we have sound effects. Weekies. Weekies? Uh, w, like that? W long I. I thought so, yeah, you just said it to me. Weekies. This I think it's weekies and not in Y. It says weekies, yeah. In Y, weekies. Weekies? Weekies? Yeah. Nobody likes the, the taste of weekies. I see it spelled spell different than that. It's inanimate, yeah. Huh? It's spelled different than what I have book. Of course it does. I wonder how, how, what the word, the spelling of the system is over there. You have to remember if it's not. Give me the book. Yeah, if it's spelled it's not different because it's... Well, it must be it, because it's not here. Okay, you can take over. Okay, so I guess this is kind of an impromptu lesson. We were talking about how do you find things in the dictionary, Ramona? And so we started out with Nuika Stain. We had this one at the bottom, and and I was saying that, kind of compounding on what we were talking about yesterday, you have the verb stem here, and you have inflectional changes at the front and back, and I told you once a person memorizes the chart, when I see this, I know the ending so well that I know the front and back are this. Then it's a simple matter of going through my brain to find the right pattern that that I can name this. So I can name it as a VTI, that's just a way to talk about it when we're learning, right? What it is, is there's a set pattern. And as soon as I find the pattern that this one is in, I need to translate that into the pattern for the third person singular. That's always the entry in the dictionary, in Cree words. So whenever you look up anything in the dictionary, if you're going to look it up in English, say I want to say, he hears something, I would look up the verb hears. I wouldn't look up the verb hear. Because you just have to put it in the sentence, she or he, blank something or she or he blank like so third person singular is she or he in English so just construct the sentence she or she or he and then whatever verb you want yeah could we actually take some words from the dictionary and then break it down into first person or second person for, for sure we, we can go through the charts if you want For me as a learner, what I'm trying to 
do is I'll go to the dictionary and say, okay, so I'm choosing a word for today, right? Okay. And so I see that word when it's in the third person, but I don't know how to break it down into uh, first person. Like say uh, the word I'm looking for, I don't know, today. Yet. For example, walking, right? So walking, walk, okay. Walk. So, so in the dictionary, I find it, it says demoteo. Okay. Now, like if I were to take that and I want to say, well, I walk, well, then how would I do that? Because okay. I, I, want, I, want to, I want the dictionary to be useful to me, but I find this, this way is backwards. Do you know what I mean? You know what I know I'm what saying? you mean because, uh, okay, so let's, let's I'll, I'll rephrase this and we'll, we'll start back. <laughs> so we have four types of verbs. I'm just going to draw four squares here, right? This is to figure out which type of verb we're dealing with, right? Yeah. So we have one that's VAI. We have one that's VTI. We have one that's VTA. And we have one that's VII. So when you look up the dictionary, Pimote, or Pimoteo in the dictionary, right? So you looked up walks, right? She or he walks. So what I was saying there with the English is in English we add an S to verbs for she or he. So if you're looking it up from the English side of things, you look up the verb walks. You don't look up the verb walk, right? So we find and we say, it says Pimoteo. What does it say after that in the dictionary? Either it will say it's a V-A-T-I or... It'll tell you the verb type. Yes. This is the part where as learners, just I'm, I'm trying to help you avoid confusion, is that if, if you use Cree words, like the, the dictionary produced at First Nations University, we can, we can trust these labels, but not all the terminology is standardized. Some, some dictionaries will have verb, phrase, and all sorts of other things afterwards. So if we stick to the one dictionary, at, at the beginning, it can simplify our lives. So we see that it says VAI. That tells us which one of these patterns to use. Ah, see, look at that. Now we take a grammar book, and so we know it's a VAI. So we come in here, and, it's a, and in a grammar book, it's going to look like this. Okay. Okay, but there's going to be a whole bunch of them, right? Yeah. And they have categories after them. 1S, 2S, 3S, 1P, 2, 1, etc. Right? These, these continue on. Okay, so what does a 1P and 2, 1 mean? Chesqua, chesqua. <laughs> just, just ignore these for right now. All I'm trying to show you is there's lots, and I'll get to that in a second. So if you wanted to say, I walked, to finish answering your first question, you looked up walks, you found this, you notice that this letter here, well, you know that the dictionary entry is always in 3S. Mm -hmm. So you find the one that's 3S and you put the word in there, Pimoteo. The W is already there for you, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Take this and move it along to where you want it. So we move it up to Pimoteo, except for there's a change that happens within the VTI, or VAI paradigm. We're going to call that a rule, okay? Rule number one, e's, long e's change to long a's in certain ones. In this one, in this one. And this is stuff we have to memorize. We have to learn it. It's like multiplication tables, right? We just have to learn that e changes to a. Then we have our word, nepemotan, I walk. Nepemotan. Right. Nepemotan. Nepemotan. And I noticed you changed your stress pattern. Did you notice that? Oh, no, actually, no, sorry, it hasn't changed. But now this one, it's going to add a syllable on. So instead of nepimotan, just to go back on our other one, it's going to be nepimotan. Nepimotan. Because we have one, two, and now it's here. Okay? So that's how you look up a verb in the dictionary. But what we were trying to do before that you said is backwards, you're absolutely right. It's like a reverse phone book, right? We're given a word, so, and then we have to figure out which one of these frames it fits into. And from those frames, we can deduce what the third person is so that we can look up the meaning in the dictionary. So the street goes both ways, right? I want to say something, I look up the word in the dictionary and I conjugate it, I change it for whatever, whoever's doing the action, turn it around, someone gives me a word, I have to figure out 
how to make that into the third person does it so I can look it up to find the meaning. So you're right, it's backwards, but you, you kind of have to be able to do both. So if we were to use a VCI, would that chart change? The first second? For sure. These, oh, are, okay. these are the rules. There, or the, there's four patterns, right? Yeah. And you have to find out which one of those four patterns it fits. Because that would change those, those four ways that you put, or five ways that they would change. Or right. So I'll give you a quick example here, but to try and teach you the morphology in Cree in an hour is a bit of a tall request because it's... Well, can I write this down? Because, wait, because I don't... Let me take a picture. Okay. Because I'm really bad at this. Okay. I'm going to... I'll show you a VTI. Wait, let me show... Let me... You have to. Okay. Okay. I'll show you a VTI. Okay. Okay. Let me take a picture. Jen's asking, yeah, do you have Jean's book? Because Jean has written a book that has every paradigm, so you can plug the verbs in anywhere. And it dances with uh, Eric's book, like they, they work together, they're standardized together. So the green book by Gene Okamasis, uh, Cree Language of the Plains it's called. If you have Cree words, you can use the grammar book to construct the words using the dictionary. Like, Is this the one that comes with the DVDs or the CDs? Uh, I, can, mine is I, can, I can show you it after. So, so this, is, this is the VAI paradigm, right? All I'm, all I'm doing is making you aware of these paradigms. I'm, I'm attempting to teach them would be quite a lot, but we could stick to three. Let's stick to one, two, and three. So we, I'll just clean this up a wee bit. So taking pimotan, we have ne pimotan. That's your one S, one first person, right? I walk. Ke pimotan. That's your second person. Singular, she or he, or you walk, sorry. And pimo teo. Third person singular, she or he walks, right? This is the one that's in the dictionary. Okay, using the same, we're going to use a, a VTI. Um, it itetin, like ititin, itititin, I, I, I think that way. So, or does anyone have a particular VI? Why don't we use the weakest stain like we had up here before? Okay. Okay. So the VTI paradigm for the first three in the, in the certain one, same one here, is ne, except for the rule here is any E changes, or sorry, any short A changes to an E. And the third person singular ends in M, uh, not W. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the word was weakest stain or no weakest stain. That was the one we were trying to break down, right? Uh -huh. So I look at that and I say, okay, it's got an N. It's got an NI on the front. But the second last letter is an E, so it can't fit this first one. It has to fit this second one. So then I know it's this one and I follow the rules of that pattern. And I get Oops. Sorry. And Oops, I'm speed writing here. There we go. We kiss stain. And we kiss and then it's the short A in the third person version. This is what we're going to look up because this is 1s, this is 2s, and this is 3s. This is the one you'll find in the dictionary. So if someone said Nuikistein, or in TH, Nuikistein, and you didn't know what it meant, but you could figure out what type of verb it is, so you can drop it into this pattern, then using that pattern, you say, okay, that's the inflection, that's first person, so I have to change it to third person, and you get this one, and you look that up, and it's going to say, she or he likes the taste of something. Does that make sense? Because a dictionary can't, it can't, there's so many different forms that if a dictionary put every form in the dictionary, I mean, the book would be this thick, right? So and it's kind of redundant because once you know the patterns, yeah. like if you give me a weakest stain, I can just tell you it's weakest thumb right away once you learn the patterns. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Can we do a VTA? And a VTA? Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I think Solomon's laughing over there. 
<laughs> Can you teach me Cree 100, 101, and 201 in 10 minutes? Yes. Sure. Yes. Um, let's do VII. Okay. Because the paradigm is quite simple. Whether words are, or if you have an inanimate object like a cup and you want to give it a quality like it's tall, that's going to be a VII. Does anyone have a VII they want to use? <coughs> Mio that's a particle. Oh, is it a particle? Yeah. Well, we could use Miyogisagao. Huh? Miyogisagao, does everyone? Oh, that great. Okay. So, let's say someone came up to you and said, uh, actually, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, they gave you another form. We'll, we'll do this. Miyogisagak. And you said, well, and you said, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Using the same, there's lots of patterns within these squares. Again, since I know the patterns, I know since there's a long vowel here, no H, and it starts with an E, that it fits this pattern. This pattern doesn't have first person, second person, third person. It only has third person and third oviative. Because you can't say, I'm good daying. It doesn't make any sense, right? You can't say you're good dang, but you can say she or he is good dang. Because think about the English. It is a nice day. Who is it? It walks. It walks is a third person. It is a nice day. Third person. It's actually kind of similar, right? That's not true linguistic theory there. That's a memory aid I use to remember which one to use. So in this one, in the dictionary, you're going to look up. It ends in a W. So actually, sorry, I should have written this as a blank, and it's ending in a W. And this one's blank, and it ends in uh, OK? Um, but this is the one you're going to find in the dictionary. That clear as mud? Now the VTI, the v, oh sorry, go ahead. No, this is the form you'll find in the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. So what we need to do is learn the pattern so that when we, when we it's kind of like once you know all the numbers, when you see them, you can tell, if I give you, if you know all your numbers from 100, or one to 100, and I say 85, is that between 70 and 80 or 80 and 90? Between what? 80 and 90. If I give you 85 <laughs> yes. and say, is that number between 70 and 80 or 80 and 90? 80 and 90. Right, because you know where it goes, right? If you memorize these and you see this, it's the same thing. You know that one fits here, just like you know 85 is between 80 and 90 because you know it, right? Mm -hmm. So the trick is, how do you get to know it? How do you study so that you know all these different forms? Mm -hmm. and, and we talk about, you know when, when you see little kids and they're young and they babble and they just talk all the time? Mm -hmm. There's like a stage of like a year where they're just bah, 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 bah. They're going through these paradigms because they're slowly figuring them out and they just babble all the time until they, they teach themselves. Mm -hmm. As second language learners, we have to do that if we want to know how to do it on the fly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so that's your VII form. So is WAPAM a VTA? Okay, so we'll use WAPAM as your VTA. Oh, okay. Oh, so is that also a mic? Now Solomon's probably laughing again as he hears this. <laughs> the VTA paradigm is about this big compared to the other ones. Okay? So these patterns are relatively simple. You, you memorize a few changes and they pretty much follow each other. This paradigm, this pattern, involves two different people. So instead of just saying, I walk, you have to say, I see him, I see them, I see you, I see you all. You see us, we see you, you see him, he sees you, he sees her. They, you know what I mean? There's so many more comp... So, so for every one that you can say in these ones, it crosses, you know? 
So you have like a, an exponential number more. The nice thing is it's patterned. So when you learn the patterns, then this pattern shrinks to about this size. There's a few exceptions in here. Is that, is that, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Okay, so let's just take WAPUM. That's good. <laughs> WAPUM. So I'm going to give you this form. I see you. No, you see me. I see you. I see you. That's great. So, but you've probably memorized it as a full word, right? Yes. Okay. We can do a, a talk later, or we can sit down and, and try and go through some of this. But as I say, the pattern's really big. I'll just show you how I dissect that to find the entry in the dictionary. Again, there's a 90, there's 98 pages of, gram, like of charts on how you can do this in Gene's book. I can't cover them all right now. But just so you know that there is a process, I will show you how, after I know the patterns, how it works, okay? This means you're involved in the action. This means the action is going that way. And this is just the complement of that. So when I look at that, also it's like times tables, nine times nine is 81. I don't have to think about it anymore, right? But when I see that, the, act, the direction's going that way. Now this seems a little bit weird, but I'm gonna explain it. We call, or this in linguistics, this is called the theme sign. It says the, direct, the direction. So, in English, I say, I see you. How do you know who's doing the seeing? I give you that sentence. How do you know that it's me seeing you and not you seeing me? Because you're the one saying it. Right, but you read that in a book. A character says it. Right. But how do you know it's not, like, how do you know it doesn't go this way? This is interesting stuff, right? We have to start analyzing what we know, but we don't know how we know it. In English, it's word order, and there's also marking to some degree. So in English, you could say, you see, you can't say you see I, because it changes to you see me, but the order matters, right? You see you, you see yourself, right? But the order, whoever comes first is the one who's doing the action, and whoever comes after. Now there's another way to put it in English, like, you were seen by me, and that switches the order, but that's a special construction. But normally, the order of the words tells you. It's not how it works in Cree. In Cree, this part tells you a direction. So there's a kind of a, an order where there's you, and then me, and I'm going to skip a few, and then there's him or her. I'm going to simplify it for now. This tells me the direction goes that way. And it tells me that you are involved in the action, and it tells me that I'm involved in the action. So it's me seeing you. This seems a bit complicated, but it's a way to mi minimize this pattern. Instead of memorizing a billion endings, if you can memorize these pieces and the ones that coincide with it, it gives you kind of a shortcut. Like, what's the other one that says you see me then? What's that? Because I know there's another way to do it. Okay. Well, like you see me, you want to translate you see me. Yeah. Okay, well, um, in. Uh, okay. This the in. means the direction's going that way. Uh, you okay. see me. Yeah. Whereas this one means it's going that way. I see you. Okay, so, but to kind of go back on track to what we were saying, when you have a, a VTA and you know your paradigms, or at least you can dissect it, then I'll give you a, a chart here. These are all the different endings. Mm. And if you can find it on there and find out which part is the inflection. So when I, when I gave you the verb with the inflection on either end, I look at that and that's the inflection. Then what's left is the verb. Then I just put it in to the one that's in yellow here. I'll pass that around. There's one that's in yellow. That's the one that's in the dictionary. So the one that's in yellow is WAP a male. And this part means she or he sees 
someone else, him or her. Yeah, so, so I'll give you some subjects so it makes more sense. If I said um, Bill, Wap, Mayo, John, uh, that means Bill sees John. Again, that looks overwhelming because it's a big pattern. But if we learn some of the functions beneath, the pattern kind of exposes itself because there's a pattern within the pattern, right? So it shrinks the number of possible objects down. But that's how you said, how do, I, how do I use the dictionary? And it's like, for every bit you learn, one helps the other, right? So the more words you learn will help you deduce these patterns. But the more patterns you learn, the more you can look up words you don't know, right? So as learners, they complement each other. Yeah, because like what I try to do, for example, if I'm, like I'm texting you or something, and I'm like, well, how do I say this particular thing in Cree? So I'll end up going into the dictionary, and I'll find that word, but it's in the third person. And then the challenge for me is um, uh, if I am s is the one doing that action, yeah. um, then I'm trying to conjugate it or into the, into whatever I need it to be. And what but you're doing is applying this pattern, right? Yeah, I'm always applying that pattern, but then now I realize there's other patterns I need to be aware of. So um, I do, I think it's very helpful for me. Awesome. Let me show you the other way. Can someone pass that chart back to Ramona when, uh, when they're done with it? I'm going to give you this, this verb. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to give you, <laughs> I need a VTA1, Solomon. I need a VTA1. VTA1? Yeah, other than WAPM. <coughs> Mo? Mo? Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you this word. Okay. Eat someone else. <coughs> so looking on that chart. Something animate? Yes, oh. Look on that chart. Yeah. Look at the one that's yellow. Yes. <coughs> what is the ending on it? Um, what's the ending? Like in the orange? In the yellow. Oh, E W. Perfect. That's the ending. That chart then tells us that's our root. Okay. Oh. Now. Look up in the top left corner. There's a place where it says 1S. Yes. And if you follow that line all the way to the right side of the page, it says 3S. Yes. Okay. This is what we're going to put in that first blank. So can you give me what goes on either side of it? On the left-hand side, the left-hand side of the column, left-hand side of the page, right beside 1S. 1S. It says NI, and then there's a blank, and then what it... AW. Perfect. So first person to third person, I go Nimual. I eat him or her. So then if I add him, it just sounds so wrong. <laughs> Nimual Kinoseo. You eat him or her? I eat the fish. Oh, I, okay, okay, okay. So I can add any animate. Like I can say we ask. No, we ask is inanimate. But we you can add, is inanimate? But you can add any animate object. So you could say Muswa, right? Now, as a fluent speaker, this kind of probably sounds a bit weird. You'd probably say, Nimi chin mus, well, I guess you could say Nimi wao kino hey? Yeah, yeah, but, but you'd probably change that to muswa, right? Uh, or, you could say Nimi wao muswa, no problem. But you're like eating the actual moose instead of I'm eating moose meat, right? It's like, yeah, because I, yeah, I think I'm eating moose. Then you would see that more often you'll end up saying muswa, yes. Muswa, yes, like Nimi chin. But mi chin follows this pattern. Actually, it follows this pattern, but it's this type of verb. But that's another story for another day. But it follows this pattern, so you'd use that pattern. I don't want to confuse you with that one. There's a few of these that follow this pattern, and they have a special ending. Okay, what about, okay, what, uh, but let's do another one of these real quick, okay? Here? To hear someone? Yeah. <laughs> I see exactly. This is so much fun. Okay, yeah, no, this is good. Here. <laughs> is it, is it, it's, it's, is, is it one of those? So you want to hear someone or you want to hear something? Oh, here, well, might as well just hear someone. Okay, you're going to hear someone. Yeah, I hear someone. Oh, I can hear something too. So, so, so you look it up in the dictionary, and what do you look up in English? VTA would be the one hearing someone. And then what would be the one hearing something? 
A VTI. The VTIs. Oh, because the I's were the an animate and then the A's were the animates. Yeah. So we're working with the animate ones. Yeah. Got it. But what word do you look up in the dictionary? You're, you're looking up in English and you don't know this. What do you look in the dictionary? She or he? Hears. Hears. So you'd look up hears, right? Yeah, I look up hears. Okay. And you get this. Yes. And it's a VTA. So we're going to follow this pattern. Yes. Okay. I want to say I hear him or her. So first find this in that chart where it says in the yellow box. Yes. And what's the ending? EW. Okay. So we're going to cross... We're going to cross off the EW, and that's our root. There you go. Now, going back to that same first line where it had 1S on the left and 3S on the right, what's that first? You gave it to me last time, right? Ni? An owl. An owl. And then we put the root in there. Then I am hearing someone? Yeah. Say it out loud. Ipe Ipe Really? And so you could say, I don't know, Masqua. Yeah, or nip, nip. Yeah. So, nipe tawao masqua, nipe tawao piesis. So, I hear a bear, I hear a, a bird. So, you see. That is so cool. Nipe tawao ben. Nipe tawao ben. Oh, okay. So, nipe tawao ben. Nipe tawao ben. Nipe tawao ben. That was, that was. I heard him as he farted. So, so that means I hear him. Now let's just do one more step. In that, what you just gave me, the ni and the ow, what's the next box right after the ow? Below it? No, right to the right of it. Ik, or no, sorry, ah, ah, A-K? And this is what Solomon was showing you when there's more than one animate object. Now, P-A-C suck. Masquak. Masquak. So, nepetawak, masquak, nepetawak, piesisak. Because the verb ending has to agree with the noun of what you're seeing. So, I see bears, I see. So, the VTAs, I always have to have number agreement. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, that means the verb and also the, the number of whatever it is, <laughs> it should be all plural. Okay. As long as it's involving a first or as long as it's involving a first or second person. Sorry, I've read. Okay. Yeah, as they, as they, yeah, as they're singing, yeah. Oh, as they're singing. But he's just adding in stuff to make it a full set. So, so you can see you can see that as they as they eat. Can I say that he's eating? Yeah, like nipe tao ak. Nipe nipe tao ak go Solomon a mitso I I hear them, and then mitso is this pattern. So we're adding chick to the end to make it them, and that's we're not going to cover it now. But but as soon as because it's not a VTA anymore, right? Meet so is, is a VAI. It follows that pattern. So that's when we want to conjugate it, we have to know all these four patterns. Oh, okay. Oh, that's wow. But it's fun. Yes, but that's wow. Way over because there. this is like a wow, right? Over here, okay. <laughs> so let, let's have a little more fun. Do you remember all that talk about AW collapsing to I? Yes. Okay. Wait, We're going to wade into deep water here. A it's going to be a bit cold, but it's. A W plus an I equals a long A. Do you remember that from our first lesson? Well, I don't remember the A W, but I remember the W plus I would be an O. Right. And on the, the second contraction on your paper was A W I plus or A W plus I equals long A. I just want to show you something because when you read the grammar book, sometimes it can be a bit confusing. Again, another way to look at it. Faith thou. We know that's our root, right? If you look on there, go across from here. So you had ni, a blank, ow, and ak. Mm -hmm. What's the first box in the orange? Ik. Ik. Okay. So we use ni, we have our verb root, and we have ik. So we're going to plug that in. What do we have right here? Oh, a W and I. A W I. 
AW plus an I equals a long A. So what happens is it becomes nippe Oh, is that why And why do we write it that way? Because it's nippe Because the stress is here, nippe And what does that mean? It means the opposite. So nippe I hear a fish. Or, yeah. Nipe tuck, a fish. How can you hear a fish? <laughs> all right, all right. I hear Solomon. <laughs> I hear Solomon. So, going back to my little diagram there, I hear Solomon. This one is going this way. Solomon. Solomon hears me. Nipe tuck. The only thing we have to remember is when we start adding these endings here, there's that those three math equations. That's all we have to remember. Too much, too much my brain. Okay. So how do you say that? What was that? Which one? This one? Nipe tuck. Nipe tuck. Nipe tuck, Christine. Nipe motate. It's just an example. I had nothing. Wow. <laughs> no, this one's I hear Solomon because it's going. This one's Solomon hears me. Okay, then how do you say snore? What would we look up in the dictionary? Let's do this. Oh, you want to add that to the sentence? Yeah. I want to hear him as he snores? Okay. I know. I, well, he heard us snoring. Okay. okay. If you look up snore, I'll rewrite this a bit cleaner. Okay, so the verb the verb you found is kito is it kito kito kwe kito kwe kito kwe oh kito kwe okay kito kwe wamo it's a long I right kito kwe wamo what's what's the fourth last letter is it a long A it's a long A I think. Okay, so this is, the, this is what you found in the dictionary. Yeah. This is fun. It's like a lot of <laughs> rabbit hole. Okay. Kitoe <laughs> kwamo. Just as a side note, this has to do with talking or uh, making a sound. Did you say puegetoe kwamo? No, I just said I told. Oh. Wow, <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> Trying to have a PG rated thing here, right? <laughs> so, this is snoring, right? But uh, sorry, this is she or he snores. Yes, he or she. We have to go into this pattern. Yes. Okay. Because yes. it says VAI in the dictionary entry, but also from our experience, we're going to just know this is a VAI. Now you notice how on that sheet, just as an example, there's ni blank ow, yes. and so there's a whole columns of blue, and then beside it there's columns of orange. Yes. Right next to it there's conjunct. It starts with an e. Yes. Okay. Again, we're in VAIs, we're not in VTAs, so we're not going to use that chart because that's the VTA, but there's a conjunct form. And when we have a compound phrase like this, we use nepetavao, I hear him, then we have to switch to the conjunct form. Okay. You asked, <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming, but what this is, is there's two different kinds. Once we use this once, if, if we don't have like an igwa or something in there, yeah. then we jump to this form or other reasons, which so Solomon can answer after. Well, I like the, uh, I remember last time I did that because you had given me like an exercise to me, like, or to use this word in, um, in, in three different ways. So. Oh, well, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use so, this verb root in three different ways. So yeah, you just conjugate it three ways. Yeah. Sit, right? And so I 
Jesus and their walk a mile. But this is where this is where uh, um, I learned that conjugating aspect. <coughs> so I said, walk. Ne walk a mile, uh, no sewi, a full, right? And then you corrected me, and I'm like, well, why not? Why can't I use a full? And you were like, no, it has to be a. And then it's it changes because it's a different person doing the action, right? You see him, and then it changes to him sitting. So. Yeah. And to tell you the difference between this, I'll leave that to Solomon for the next presentation. <laughs> okay, but, that's, but, but uh, that makes sense why after Nefe Shalal, I have to conjunct after, add the conjunct. Perfect, if it makes sense, good. It makes sense to me, that's how I make sense of it. Good. Yeah. Okay, so if I... First verb has red I, second verb has you and So do I have to still do that with Nefe Shak? So he hears me, yeah. and then are you going to say as I sit or as he sits? No, uh, isn't that to uh, say like uh, Ben hears me snoring? Okay, so nipe tak ben, a, and then it goes in the conjunct again. So we go to find out how to write I'm snoring. Again, we find this is a VAI. We go to our book that has the pattern. We follow the rules of the pattern, and we are in the conjunct here. Ikito we guan mian. So you know the card game we played, Jen and Ramona, like that osi tatana That teaches you this pattern. Okay. Just one pattern. I have a prototype for this pattern and this pattern, but I never published it. So, so you shorten that up there. <laughs> Make it shorter. <laughs> no, but, uh, <clears throat> you so, were snoring last week. Well, I mean, you can say things a million different ways. I was just trying to teach them the patterns. Like, like the pattern we're trying to learn is this one and then this one. Yeah, you can say lots of different ones. You could just say, you snored last night, and obviously you heard them if you say that, because <laughs> how else would you know they snored if you hadn't heard them, right? So you could just be like, you snored last night. Or you could say, you could say lots of ways, right? You were snoring last night. You woke me up because you snored last night, right? It, there's lots of different ways to do it. But right now we're just kind of focusing on the pattern so we can get those. Uh, what verb do you, go school, go school hail? Okay, no, I'll, I'll go with it. No, no, Solomon, Solomon put me up to the task. Yeah, go scoheo, right? And then you expand from it. For sure. I want to teach you how to do a driver's license test. Okay. Do the test as you were taught to get the license. Then you can go and drive the crazy if you want. Absolutely. That's a really good way to put it.